Hey everybody, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. Back in the studio today. Today I dug something out of my closet to show you in this special video. I have sitting right here a vintage Allen & Heath System 8 console. This console is the Mark II version of the console. It was made approximately 1982. This is the 168 model. 16 meaning for the 16 channels. 8 for the 8 subgroups and returns. They also made a 1616 that has 16 tape returns but it still has 8 subgroups. And I have right here the original manual for this console so I can refer to this while I'm showing you the details of this console. I hope you enjoy. Get ready to see this up close. I'm going to start by looking at this meter bridge. On this console, which is the 168, we have eight VUs here for the subgroups and we have the master left and right VU. Then we have a headphone jack and the XLR input for the talkback mic. Okay, let's go over here and take a look at the channel strips on this. Starting from the top, we have a pad switch. We have the mic line switch which conveniently feeds the tape return, 1 through 8 anyway, by pressing this line switch will feed the tape returns through these main channels. Then you've got your EQ in and out switch right here. Then you have the high frequency selection switch for either 8 kilohertz or 12 kilohertz and the cutter boost knob here for this frequency. Then you have your mid frequency from 400 hertz to 6 kilohertz and then the boost and cut knob for that then you have your low frequency adjustment and a switch to change that frequency from either 60 hertz to 120 hertz interestingly our aug sends are pre fader except for augs 2 if you press this button so AUGS1 is pre-fader, AUGS2 is pre-fader with the button up, and post-fader with this button down. The manual says AUGS3 is also affected by the push button, so 2 and 3 are switchable pre or post, according to the manual, although I have not tested that on this console. Below that we have our bus routing switches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the main left-right bus, followed by the pan knob. So if you want to send the output of this channel to one of the buses, you press the bus selection switch and pan it, and in this case they've even labeled it odd and even. So your odd numbers, you turn this knob this way, and for even numbers, like 2, you would turn it this way to even. If you're assigning to the left-right mix, you have your pan control right here from left to right. Then we have a PFL or pre-fader listen button and the mute switch. And then our 100 millimeter fader. And that's the channel strips. I'm going to hover over this just a second longer to let you guys get a closer look. Moving on to the right hand side of the console, this is the subgroup and return section. We have a level control at the very top that normally controls the volume of the program going to the stereo output from the subgroups. However, if you drop the tape switch, then you can monitor the tape inputs 1 through 8 coming into the back of the console. You also have access to the AUG sends, AUGs 1 and 2. However, this control here can be changed to AUGs 3 by pressing this button. Maybe you can see that better over here without the shadows. We have our pan control and our subgroup faders down here. Let's zero in on the master section now. Go up here and start from the top. We've got a 1 kilohertz slate tone 
Pressing this button will send a 1 kilohertz tone to all the outputs of the mixer. You got your master fan and power switch here. Your AUGS masters 1 through 3 are here along with a dedicated AFL or after fader listen button for each AUGS. Over here you've got your talkback. This is your talkback level. If you remember the talkback microphone input is right here on the top of the meter bridge. You've also got a button here to send the talk back to all of the outputs on the mixer or to just the QSENs. These are momentary switches. Then you have your monitor section here. Your headphone, volume, a dim switch for the monitors, and here is your control room monitor level, and the source selection for the monitor section and a mono switch. So you can send, or you can listen to rather, the Q, your tape returns or the stereo mix. Over here we've got our Q, which is the same type of thing. This selects what audio is being sent to the Q mix outputs. You can choose stereo mix, AUGS1 or AUGS2, or a combination of those three. You can also make that Q send mono. Below that here we have our effects returns. You've got level for those and they have access to AUGS 1 and 2 and can be routed to the groups or the stereo mix. And then you've got your pan controls for your returns here and a pre-fader listen button for those. And below that you've got your master fader left and right. This has separate faders for left and right which is kind of a nice feature. You don't find that on some less expensive consoles. So again I'm just going to hover over this for a minute with the camera. Let you all get a really good look at this. This console did not come with the original power supply. It came with an international power 15 volt power supply, so this is a replacement. I'm going to take a look at the back of this Allen and Heath System 8 now. I'm going to start all the way over here on the right side, back of the console. We've got something down here that says Red 1, and that was added to this console. This was used in a broadcast environment, so I'm not sure what this additional quarter inch socket right there is. But our normal channel connections are back here. We've got our XLR mic input. We have a line input for each channel and an insert for each channel. And then below that, we have the Q output. We have AUX3 output, AUX2 output, AUX1 output. Now this next set of quarter inch jacks here Starting with that AUX3 out, if we're looking from the right hand side, these are actually tie lines so that you can connect this console to an expansion car or to another console. So these are tie lines for your stereo bus, your PFL bus, AUX1 and 2, and AUX3 have inputs and outputs on these tie lines here. Next we have our master section here. We've got our master left and right XLR outs. This is the power input right here. Then we have our echo return, one and two. We have our inserts for the masters left and right. And a stereo tape input. And our monitor output for our studio monitors, which is going to be a stereo TRS jack. So you need a splitter to hook up to a pair of monitors or an amp. Over here in our subgroup section, we have our submaster outputs on these XLRs. These are male XLRs, so they're outputs. We also have bus inputs on quarter inch TRS jacks. We've got bus input one and two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Below that we have our tape inputs or tape returns 1 through 8 and then we have an insert for the subgroups 
1 through 8. Now the last thing to note on the back of this console being a Mark II, this has direct outputs. They're on the meter bridge, on the back of the meter bridge. You got 1 through 16 direct outputs here on the back of the meter bridge. The Mark I's did not have these direct outputs unless you ordered it as an option apparently. But the Mark II and Mark III System 8's have direct outputs on the channels, which is great if you're using a digital audio workstation and you want to use the preamps from this console. I hope you enjoyed the up close and personal look at the vintage Allen and Heath System 8 mixing console. I have an example for you now where I used this console to track drums a few months ago. This console's preamps were used on all the drum tracks on what you're about to hear. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this vintage Allen & Heath System 8 Mark II mixing console. To me this thing sounds fantastic. The EQ, while not being extremely extensive, does have some good frequency selections. It seems to work quite well. The preamps in this thing sound amazing, so this is a great set of inexpensive preamps for those of you that have a digital audio system and you want to track something through some cool warm sounding preamps. I just pulled it out of the closet to do a little bit of cleaning up on it and to make this video. So if you're interested in seeing more videos about the Allen Heath System 8, let me know in the comments and I can do some more demonstrations or other kinds of videos about this console. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, night, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having. Have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank mm -hmm. you.